if something falls off of a roof or is dropped off of a roof or a cliff or something like that, how fast is it going at time zero? Yeah, nowhere. It hasn't started falling yet. It falls off the roof. That means that all of this happens in the instant it falls off where it has no initial velocity. So if something falls off or is dropped, the initial velocity is zero. Okay? Unless you're told it's thrown, fired, projected, or something like that that implies it was powered off, okay? then you have to assume that vi is zero. And so that's what we have to assume in this case, because it specifically says it just falls. If something falls, okay, then at time zero, it isn't moving. Okay? Since it's falling, and they make no reference to this being on another planet, I have to assume that a is what value? 9.81, and that is an assumption we always make. It's a, con it's a contextual given, okay? Unless they say falling on Mars, then I'd have to figure out what G is on Mars, okay? But in this case, it's negative 9.81 meters per second squared, okay? Or 9.81 meters per second squared down. It's probably better to write in my givens, okay? Um, it's six meters above the ground. How long will it fall? All right, so I'm looking for time. So the only formula I have that has those four things in it is this one. You know, that one I told you I'd never ask you to solve for time with. Unless vi was zero, and it is. So since vi is zero, I can get rid of that part. V is just one half at squared. I'm not looking for d. I already have it. I'm looking for time. So to manipulate this for time, all I have to do is divide off the other two things, the 1 half and the a, and then I have to square root. OK. So in this case, time is going to equal 6 divided by 1 half times 9.81. I'm not making 9.81 negative because there's no change in direction here. Everything is down, so I'm just going to make down positive for simplicity. Okay? All right. So what we're really looking at here is the square root of 6 divided by 4.905, because that's what half of 9.81 is. All right. So this thing's going to fall for 1.1 seconds. Okay. Everybody all right with that one? Acceleration problems, because basically all an acceleration problem is is an algebra thing, okay, are very often contextually difficult. Okay? That is, you have to read it carefully in order to get all your givens from the question. Okay? Because I know you guys can do algebra. I know the manipulation of this formula is not the difficult part for you. Okay? But being able to do the reading comprehension part is important. Okay? Especially if you're going on to Physics 30, where I think I told you before, they sometimes have questions on the diploma exam that are two pages of reading to answer one question. All right? So we want to get you guys kind of used to, I have to get a lot from what I read in order to help me do the math. All right. Try this one. Looking for the final velocity of a rock that is propelled over a 0 0.30 meter distance by an acceleration of 22 meters per second for a 0.72 second interval. Okay. Give a few minutes on that. All right, so let's have a look at our givens here. First off, they want us to find VF, so that's my question mark, okay, of a rock that's propelled over a 0 0.30 meter distance. Okay, so distance is 0.3 meters by an acceleration of 22 meters per second squared for a time of 0.72 seconds. All right, so I've got VF. Well, actually, I don't have it. I'm looking for it. I've got D, I've got A, and T. Okay? The only formula I've got that's got all of those things in it is this one. D equals VF times T minus 1 half AT squared. Assuming that's probably the one I'm going to want to use. But I need to solve for VF. So to manipulate this, I need to add 
this term over to the other side. Okay, so that's going to be d plus 1 half at squared equals vf times t. I'm going to divide both sides by t, and that'll leave me with vf. So now I can just plug in my numbers. Okay, so we're going to have 0.3 meters plus 1 half times 22 times uh, 0.72 squared divided by 0.72. That'll get me my final velocity. So 0.3 uh, plus 0.5 times 22 times 0.72 squared divided by 0.72. All right, so we're looking at a final velocity, or final, yeah, I guess final velocity is what they said, but I don't know what direction to put on that because they didn't give me one. So I really can't okay, give them a velocity. 8.3 meters per second. Best I could do is positive for a vector on that, okay, because I think they did actually ask for the final velocity. They really can't fairly ask for that without giving me a vector in the question. They never did. Everybody all right with that one? Hey, try this one. I don't know if you guys have ever seen, uh, they do this on CSI. They used to do it on Mythbusters sometimes. They make the uh, ballistics gel dummy. Okay, so they like pour the gel. It's like it looks like Jello, and they pour it into a mold. But when it hardens, it has the same consistency as like a human body. So they can do ballistics tests by shooting at these things and seeing to what depth the bullet penetrates or what speed it leaves or exits at. And they can study the size and shape of like wounds from from different types of weapons and stuff without having to do it on a living thing. Okay, so it's very handy stuff. Right, so that's what this one's talking about. Looking, we're looking for the initial velocity on this one, so we're looking for vi. Okay, uh, it enters the ballistics gel and slows at 150 meters per second squared. What do I need to put in front of that number? Uh, negative, right? Okay, for 0.252 seconds. Okay, and its final velocity is 65.2. Meters per second. All right, so this one then is a uh, through and through. Okay, that means they fired the at the ballistics gel and the bullet went right through and came out the other side. Okay, um, and that does happen. Okay. Um, so we're looking for vi. I have a t and vf. What formula am I going to use? Yep, delta v over delta t. Vf minus vi over t. Okay, or one from last year. So I'm solving for VI here, so I'm going to multiply both sides by T. Then I'm going to add VI to make it positive, and then I'm going to subtract T times A over to the other side. Okay, so that'll be how I solve for VI. When I plug in my numbers, I'm going to have 65.2 uh, minus 0.252 times negative 150. Five point two minus point two five two times negative one hundred and fifty. All right. So this was not a very fast bullet. Okay, one hundred and three meters per second. Okay, I don't know, like maybe a little derringer, just a little bunch of it, like this big. Okay, not a very fast bullet. It's still enough to hurt you. It's still enough to go through the ballistics gel at close range. Okay, um, they can still cause a lot of damage. So. Our, final, our initial velocity is 103 meters per second. Okay. He's making a little bit of sense. Okay. The trickiest part is getting what you need and deciding on your formula. After that, it's just algebra. Like I've said before, I trust your algebra. That's not the part I think that is going to challenge you. Okay. It's figuring out which formula to use. Okay. All right. Try this one. You're looking for distance on this one. Alright, so on this one, uh, we're looking for how far, so we're looking for distance. Okay, We know the acceleration is 
positive 4.52 meters per second squared, and it's moving from a velocity of 123 to 300. We have to assume those are both positive numbers, okay? Um, so 123 VF being positive uh, 300 meters per second. Okay, is that a fairly big increase in velocity? It is. Is my acceleration very big? Not really, it's like half a G, okay? So I'm only increasing my velocity by 4.52 meters per second every second, and I have to increase my velocity by 167, 177, sorry, meters per second. This is gonna take me a while. So should I expect that the distance traveled is gonna be fairly large? Yeah, and that's the kind of thing you wanna think about in your head before you start a question. Because then you'll know whether your answer is reasonable or not. Okay? Because sometimes people they get a question done, they've done it all right, and they look at it and they go, gee, that doesn't seem right. Okay? Well, think about the question. Okay? Think about whether that answer makes sense within, again, the context of the question. Okay? If it's talking about something like this and you get an answer of five meters, you probably did something wrong because the context of the question says I should go a lot further than five meters in order to do this job. Okay? All right, so what formula am I going to use? Probably this one, VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Is there another way to do it? Yeah, but you have to do more work, so don't do it that way. Okay? Not, I mean, you wouldn't get it wrong. Okay? If you did this in two steps or three steps, you're fine, as long as you have the right two or three steps, okay? uh, but it takes you longer. Right? Most of these acceleration questions you should be able to do in one step. All right, so I'm looking here now to solve for the distance traveled. So I'm gonna first subtract VI squared over to the other side. Okay, and then I'm gonna divide both sides by 2A in order to get D by itself. Okay, so when I'm plugging in my numbers here, that's gonna be 300 squared minus 123 squared, okay, divided by two times 4.52. Okay, and that should give me my overall distance, which is 8.28 times 10 to the 3 meters. Okay, that's like over 8 kilometers. Does that answer make sense within the context of the question? It does. Can you just put kilometers? Yeah, you could have put 8.28 uh, kilometers if you wanted to. Okay, any other questions on it? Okay, did you bracket the bottom? That would probably, that would be it, because then you got you got a you get a smaller number, right? If you go this divided by two and then multiply by four point five two, it's much different than if you divide it by nine point zero eight. So if we're doing this one here, it'd be three brackets, three hundred squared minus one hundred twenty-three squared divided by um, two times four point five two. Sometimes you have, you have to outsmart your calculator sometimes or try and do order of operations for you. Okay, see if you can do this one. Okay, so you're looking for the initial velocity okay, of a runner who finishes a race at 15 meters per second. Race was 150 meters long and took 21.2 seconds. This one might be a little tricky. You must also assume that the acceleration was uniform. It doesn't say that in the question, but I'm telling you that because it might help you pick your formula. So on this one, we're looking for VI. Okay, uh, we're told they finish at 15 meters per second. Okay, the race is 150 meters long okay, and took 21.2 seconds. All right, I don't have A, is that all right? Okay. 
I do have a formula that has VI in it with these other things, and it's this one. VF plus VI over 2 times T. Okay, that's the formula I'm going to have to use here. Could I have used other formulas and done this in, in uh, multiple steps? Yeah, I could have. Okay, that'd be fine. But this is one step, so it's quicker. Okay. Uh, so I'm looking for VI, so I'm going to divide both sides by T, okay. that's going to get rid of the brackets, okay. and then all I have to do is multiply both sides by 2 and subtract VF. So I'm going to have 2 times D over T uh, minus VF will give me VI, so that'll be 2 times 150 divided by uh, the time, which was 21.2. Three hundred divided by twenty-one point two right, gives us an initial velocity of uh, fourteen point one. What, what about subtracting? Well, oh, I forgot to subtract the VF. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Sorry. Um, minus. Uh, what was VF? Fifteen. I forgot to subtract. You're right. Minus fifteen. Okay. So they were going backwards. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. They could have been like standing at the start line, and then just as they were getting told to go, they rock back onto their back foot and push forwards. Okay. Common thing for people to do when they want to push off is to rock their weight backwards onto their back leg, okay, and, and then push off from there. All right. So a completely reasonable answer within the context of the question. Okay. Uh, 0 0.849. No, sorry. 0 0.85 negative would be our initial velocity. All right. Is this stuff making sense? Okay, get the hang of this. All right, I'm gonna give you about a three minute break. I'm gonna have you do a few more. So you need to use the bathroom or answer your snaps or whatever. Anything you can do that.